You ever meet someone and you're like, what? Huh? Why don't you just say that in the first place? <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm Claudia Brown Coulter with Pivotal Peace. I'm your go-to mediator for navigating divorce while parenting children with special needs. I'm also a legal document assistant, LDA, based in the greater Los Angeles area. And as a mediator, I'm also a conflict coach. So let's talk about clarifying miscommunications or misunderstandings. And the title is funny. It's like how to prevent conflicts during divorce. I know. I know. But the thing is, in divorce, there's going to be conflicts and they're going to be worse because there are so many emotions. Everything is like on level 10. So let's talk about how we can kind of quelch this fire of these misunderstandings, tamp out these little fires that threaten to destroy everything so that we can have a better outcome, a better divorce, a better post-divorce life, and less stress as we're going through divorce. So misunderstandings obviously lead to conflict because what? Oh, I know they did not just say that. They also strike fear. You can feel in your body, there's this chemical uh, reaction that begins to happen as you become anxious and nervous. Your body is like doing this, almost betraying you. Cause you're like, I'm trying to stay calm and I can't stay calm. But if you can clarify those misunderstandings, things can calm down really, 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 really quickly because misunderstandings will escalate things immediately for you and they will turn into a bigger dispute. Sometimes. The other person, you got to let the other person think that you're dumb. I know. I know you're not dumb. But th does it really matter what they think of you if their communication style is so bad that you don't understand what they're trying to communicate? <laughs> let them think you're dumb. <laughs> you're actually the smart one in the situation because you are actively working to create clearer communication, to create less misunderstanding so that progress can be made. So if they think you're dumb, they think you're dumb, fine. If they will explain what they mean, great, okay? It's not your fault that they don't know how to talk right. They don't know how to communicate right, right? It's not their fault, your fault that they're just throwing word salads around and expecting you to understand. So sometimes in a divorce, that legal terminology really messes things up. You know, you, you, you first of all, you have to serve your spouse. Hey, you're, we're getting a divorce, but I still have to serve you. People are like, I don't want to be served. Well, I can't avoid that. And then when you look at the summons, you know what the summons says? Let me get this right. Get the, I had a look, make sure I had the right words. You have been sued. Holy, f I've been sued? <sighs> right. <laughs> Let's just make this more challenging. So not only are you breaking up with me, now you're suing me too? Our language of divorce in this country is very adversarial and it pits people against one another. So this is why you're watching these types of videos, why I make these types of things so that you don't have to take the bait of that negative type of conflict, okay? You can work through this. Sometimes though there's legal jargon that doesn't make sense. It's like custody, wait, what, wait, fit, what is, what exactly? my child's not a prisoner, what what does that mean? Or what does reserved mean and jurist with jurisdiction? How is, how is all of this calculated? Like it just is so confusing. And then it's like, there's a hearing and you're in pro per or, I mean, and those are pretty simple to understand. There's a, a lot of other, other terms in there and, and a lot of other forms where you're just like, I, I don't even know what this means, but I just know that, wait, you filed an ex parte? What? There's so much there. And if the legal sy system is being used and there's no communication and all you're looking at are these legal documents, it can be very confusing. Uh, and then we always make assumptions. We are pissed off at this person that we are divorcing or vice versa. And they are making assumptions about us or we're making assumptions about them. 
And you know what they say about assumptions. It makes If you assume something, it makes an ass out of you and me. Okay, sometimes that's not true. Sometimes your assumptions are correct. But when you assume something, once again, your internal system gets worked up. And then your, your mind starts going and it's going down this negative road. And then pretty soon you're going to manifest how to make that happen. So you got to stop the assumptions. This is where you have to seek clarification. Sometimes people, not only do they not communicate well, they don't communicate all the way. Like it's all in their head, but doesn't end up in their thumbs when they're texting you. Or it doesn't come out of their mouth. And they assume you know, and then they have the nerve to be offended because you didn't know something because these people didn't communicate it. So sometimes people are incomplete in their communication. You know your spouse, you know your spouse. You you just gotta play dumb and ask extra questions. The other thing, the other thing that can lead to conflict, especially you know misunderstandings in a divorce, is another person. So. I'm a firm believer that you should end something before you start something new. Some of you, your, your something new ended the something old. Others of you, your marriage is over, but you haven't legally ended it, but you're in a relationship with someone else. Okay. Okay. Fine. What I see happen a lot is when that new person gets involved, they get their fingers in your divorce and they're like a puppet master and they're pulling the strings they're pulling the strings I see it a lot not all the time but I see it a lot with women controlling men and I'm not saying that women are controlling and I'm not saying men are easily controlled this is qualitative data this is not quantitative data this is anecdotal data okay this is just what I'm seeing. So there, when this third person gets involved, this third person is in your divorce, but they're unseen. And you know, like your spouse, even though you're getting a divorce from them, they're normally one way. And then overnight they flip and they change. That's because somebody else is in their head. So if you've got a new partner, male or female, I don't care. You got a new partner. Your divorce is not their business. You need to keep them out of your divorce. You need to end your marriage and end it as respectfully as possible and kick them out of your divorce, okay? It's normal and natural to talk to people close to you about your divorce. But listen, your new partner has a vested interest in you coming out on top. They don't want a peaceful resolution. They don't want, um, you know, mutuality. They want you to get as much as you can because it benefits them. So keep them out. Okay. So how do you prevent further misunderstandings? I I've said this time and time again in this video. You got to ask questions. Ask questions. Who cares if they think you look dumb? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Get the clarification you need. Now, in mediation, when we're in mediation, I tell people you can, when somebody makes a proposal, one of the things you can do before you say yes or no is to ask clarifying questions. But a clarifying question is not, what are you, an idiot? That is not a clarifying question. Another qu clarifying question that isn't is, what were you thinking? That is not a clarifying question. A clarifying question could be in a different tone. What were you thinking about? Tell me how you thought this would work. What, how do you see this working? What were you thinking as you formulated this idea? So I can understand. I can see where you're coming from. Same thing. I'm still asking, what were you thinking? But my tone is different. My intent is different. My internal posture is different. So asking clarifying questions. Sometimes people get bent out of shape when you ask questions. That's not your problem. They need to be more clear. Okay. And sometimes when they're more clear, I told you it was at three o'clock. Okay. Well, you didn't tell me the time and date, but thank you for telling me now. We'll make sure we're there. Right. And so <laughs> I know that that's silly, 
But if you've been there, you know, sometimes it's something as small as they have communicated everything except when and where to be. And they expect you to know, and it's incomplete communication. You have to have maturity and just, you know, you can think to yourself, oh, they're so annoying. Okay, that's fine. Just don't say that. Don't say that. Paraphrase, repeat. You don't necessarily have to paraphrase and repeat if it's an email or a text, but if it's verbal, paraphrase and repeat, make sure you understand. Be specific. And to that end, especially if it is in a text, that can be your best friend though, because you can fume and then you can type something and sound totally different. But sometimes people think that they're being really clear in a text and they're not. So this is when occasionally you do need to paraphrase in a text. Okay, so we're doing this, 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 and this for our child, for example. Make sure it's clear, okay? And sometimes like, what? what? How did you not know that? Doesn't matter. Make Get the information. Make sure it's clear. Be as polite as you can possibly be, at least in text form. You don't have to feel that way. You just can't let it show. Okay, so mediators, we help you facilitate communication. A therapist can help you understand communication and give you tips on how to communicate with your spouse as you're divorcing. Obviously, a mediator can help you do that too as a conflict coach. An attorney can help explain legal jargon. When someone is super duper upset, when someone's being a jerk or annoying or difficult, it could be that there are emotions underneath their words. And it is not about what they are saying. It is either, you know, they they are feeling insecure or inferior. And so they're trying to dominate with their words. Okay. Or they're feeling more intellectually uh, powerful than you. So they're trying to dumb things down with their words to come down to your level to explain it to you. It doesn't mean any of that's actually true. And the truth is not relative. Truth is truth. So just because they feel that way don't mean that is true. If you speak to the emotion, you're going to get through to them. If you speak to the emotion of, okay, uh, you know, there's misunderstanding. They're kind of being a jerk. Oh, I'm, can you tell me why you want to change plans like this? Oh, oh, I didn't under, thank you for explaining that to me because I was feeling anxious. I was feeling worried and I, I thought this is what you meant, but you explained something else to me. Thank you. And yeah, that sounds great. I'm totally okay with that. Like just even saying that right now, just with you, like my nervous system, something shifted in that. They will feel that too. Words are really, really powerful. They will feel that and it will calm them down. Just try it. What do you have to lose by trying it? Try it, come back. Try it, come back. Tell me how it went. You obviously, your job is to stay calm and focused. That's really hard. This is where a mediator and a coach can help you. But really working on your communication, really just trying to go, okay, I'm effing pissed off with this person right now. I'm trying not to let it show. I'm going to take a break from this. I'm going to communicate in writing and really be succinct and clear will help them. The more clear you are, the more clear they will be. This will lead not just to a better divorce. It's going to lead to better relationships all around. A better post-divorce relationship, a better relationship with your children, a better relationship with the people that you meet, the people that you're involved with, a better relationship at work. Clarifying misunderstandings, especially as women, it's very hard for us to ask clarifying questions because there is a chauvinistic um, idea that we are inf inferior to men, we're dumb, or that we're vindictive or bitchy or something like that. It's really negative. What do you want though? What do you want? Do you want to prove that you are right and you're better? Okay. 
Is that actually going to happen? Or do you want peace in your life? So ask those clarifying questions. You don't have any control of what they think of you. You were divorcing them anyway. So get the information you need. Be polite and respectful, even though they haven't earned it. This is not about them. It's about you. The more you act that way, the less stress you will have in your life, the more peace you will have, and the better your divorce outcomes will be.